Well, let's get more now on the launch of the new Apple iPhone and iPad. I'm joined now by Tim Bradshaw. He's a tech reporter and personal tech columnist for the Financial Times. He joins us from San Francisco. So, so, so you were there. What, what can you tell us about the iPhone to start with? Yeah, what's the difference between this and the older version? Well, it's, it's a funny iPhone launch, really, because it's actually, uh, in some ways, a relaunch of the phone that they first launched in 2012. From the outside, the iPhone SE looks identical to the iPhone 5 and 5S that they brought out a couple of years ago. But the innards, uh, in terms of the processor and the camera, are the same um, most recent technology that we saw in the iPhone 6S that came out last September. So it's something of a Frankenstein device, but um, it's designed to appeal to a hardcore of people that really don't like the growing size of smartphones that we've seen in recent years, the, the fabulous explosion, if you like. Um, and also, it's coming in at a much lower price, at about $400 uh, unsubsidized, so um, comparing with about 650 for uh, the iPhone 6 and its cheapest version, so it's a lot more affordable and accessible, um, which I think Apple is hoping will appeal to consumers in emerging markets, such as uh, India in particular. So it looks exactly the same as another version of the yeah, iPhone, then? No difference at all? There's a slight difference in polish, um, and it comes in a in the rose gold colour that um, Apple introduced last year. Uh, but other than that, no. You, if you were to put them side by side, you probably couldn't tell them apart. Um, but the, uh, the, the the there is a big difference in the internals. There are a lot of the flagship features that we've seen in the last couple of years, such as Apple Pay, so you can pay just by touching your phone to a, a sensor in in retailers. Um, there's the live photos um, feature, which when you take a picture, you get a couple of seconds of animation uh, around it. Um, and and the, the photo itself is much higher uh, sorry the camera itself is, is much higher resolution than the one that we had a few years ago um, so the, the the it's the it's the innards of a iphone 6s in the in the case of a iphone 5. now iphone they have seen a slowing of sales um recently so will this be enough to actually to actually change that because if you if you're saying it looks the same and it's the difference is largely in how it works and the operation and the software involved do people really care about that will that be enough I think it will be the price that gets people in. I mean, it's it's a there's a there's a hardcore of people who, um, who who like the smaller form factor. But the reason that Apple's sales growth went um, so explosively large a couple of years ago was because it traded up to this bigger um, sort of five inch five, or five and a half inch sized uh, the, uh, phone that came out in um, first in 2014. So that's where most of the market is these days. That's what Samsung is doing and HTC. Uh, everyone seems to have these larger form factors. But there is a, a hardcore of people that just want something that's a little bit lighter and more pocketable. Um, but it's probably not big enough to move the needle at a time when, as you say, um, iPhone growth has really slowed down. In fact, analysts are expecting that in the current quarter that we're in right now, ending in at the end of this month in March, we'll see the first quarter of decline since the iPhone was first launched in, back in 2007. Um, and it probably looks as though this year is going to be a down year as well. So that's partly because Apple sold so many iPhones last year, um, and it's just hard to um, beat its own comparison. But it is it does slightly give the appearance of being a little bit desperate for sources of growth by bringing out this, uh, this slightly uh, in-between device. All right, let's talk about then very quickly the, the iPad Pro 9.7. When do we get to 9.7? Uh, so 9.7 is the is the screen size. Um, oh. So the 9.7 inches, just under 10 inches, is is the size that the iPad has been since it first came out in 2010. Um, and the iPad Pro was the new sort of productivity focused version that was first introduced last year in a, a 13 inch uh, screen size. So it's 13 inches is more like what you would get in a in a laptop. Um, it came with a with a full size keyboard and the and the Apple Pencil that allowed you to draw uh, on the screen as well. Um, so the, basically what they've taken, again, is, is many of the same components from that, but put it in a slightly smaller um, device size, which is which is the, the sort of more familiar iPad form factor. It means the, the keyboard is a little bit more cramped um, than the one that came out in the, the original iPad Pro uh, last autumn, um, but the pencil also works. It has a, uh, a new kind of display that it says is, is offers richer colors and is easier to read in bright sunlight and things like that. But again, it's, it's a little bit of a sort of... Um, incremental upgrade. And I, I think um, Apple makes a habit of releasing its more significant features and, and upgrades in September, October time, which is when we'll probably still see the next iPhone 7. Um, but holding it in March, this is a little bit of a sort of incremental in-betweener event uh, with a couple of in-betweener devices. All right. Look, Tim Bradshaw speaking to us from San Francisco. Thanks very much.